I'm joined today by Maureen Taylor and Louis Pisker to let you know about a new financial empowerment center located in the Wayne County Treasurer's Office. Do you know someone, family or friends, that need help with finances? Do you know people having trouble making ends meet, especially with property taxes or other payments? The Detroit Financial Empowerment Center can help. Treasurer Sabri invites you to visit the new Financial Empowerment Center, 400 Monroe, on the fifth floor in downtown Detroit. We've partnered with the Wayne County Treasurer's Office and the City of Detroit to provide free one-on-one -on -one financial counseling to help you address problems related to utility bills, property or income taxes, credit repair, and other financial matters. Our professional counselors can also help you plan your monthly budget and increase your credit score. This service is available to all Wayne County residents. For free and private financial counseling, contact the center at 313-322-6222 and make an appointment today. Uh, we are here once again. Uh, my name is Maureen Taylor, and I work with the Michigan Welfare Rights Organization, and I'm here with my colleague, Marion Kramer, the national chair of the Welfare Rights Union, and she is going to give an official welcome and uh, read the numbers that uh, you might be interested in if you want to call in. So, Marion, uh, say hello. Hello, and, you know, we're happy to be here. Uh, we missed you last week. But we had things to do. I don't want to remind you that uh, we want you to come to the phone with your paper and pencils uh, to take down information. Um, if you should call in, you want to call in at 313-688-0342 R 868-0351. And eight six eight four three three six. Those of you that are on the computer, my heart go out to you. <laughs> uh, uh, the website is www.tv33whpr.com. I say that because I've been having so much problem with this new computer I have. Uh, but um, welcome. We back, Maureen. All right. Um, I think we have. It, Go on. Uh, things are very difficult all over the world, all over the country, certainly uh, the state and uh, the city. All kinds of things are happening all around us that affect our standard of living, our quality of life. So uh, we have some folks that we're expecting to call our broadcast this morning. One is and, uh, and, and say again? One, uh, I think Willie has called in. N nothing there. She she just said it. Nothing there. So we're gonna have to call back. Hmm. Okay. So uh, uh, we got some folks uh, that we're kind of um, we're not necessarily waiting on them, but uh, they uh, are gonna call us and share a couple of things in terms of what's happening where they are. And in the meanwhile, what we'll do is uh, get started. Marion already gave you the good advice. Come to your phone with something to write with and a piece of paper. Um, for those of you that are complaining about the welfare rights uh, t uh, hotline, uh, we're complaining about it too. So we're going to put out a general call to Sylvia. Sylvia, uh, the next time you're in the area, you have got to go down to welfare rights and let <laughs> us re-tape uh, a, a telephone message that's on our phone lines. And, you know, all these different projects we're in and 
people were calling us about different kind of programs or whatnot that we've been different sponsoring so over different marches and whatnot. And we're going to take all of that off now and have people just call in if you want to leave a name and number because uh, this virus, uh, welfare rights, is still on short time schedules. So we don't have the usual hours that we used to be in because everything is just so dangerous now. So uh, call the office still. Leave a message, and we will get back to you. And, uh, Marion, uh, last night the governor set up a new program. 10 o'clock last night I got this message, <clears throat> and they've got something. I see allergies. Okay, they've got something it. called the Michigan COVID-19 Safety Grant Program. And uh, what this is is a program that it will provide up to ten thousand dollars to small businesses yes, yes, yes. so uh uh, uh uh victor and and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh uh miss um uh miss denise if you own a beauty shop you own a nail tech shop you own a bakery uh those small businesses and whatnot you should be getting online and looking up the michigan COVID 19 Safety grant program up to ten thousand dollars is available. And you don't have to pay it back. And you do not have to pay it back if you use it uh -huh. to purchase or train for safety. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting gloves and masks and and those kinds of things and buying those things and having them in your store, mm -hmm. uh, what's the other child's name? The Pingree store. Uh, one of our church members that owns that one. Uh, Midland and Livernois. I saw him at one of those demonstrations. I promised to come up there and, and look at uh, his store. So mm -hmm. if you are friends with or if you own a small business, uh, the Delhi Plaza is on Wyoming. What is that street? Wyoming, uh, uh, Curtis, the next block north, north of, of Curtis. Curtis. Mm -hmm. And it's on the corner, and they sell uh, corned beef and roast beef. And uh, it's a small place. Oh, they, I, I, I've been going there for years. I love them. Mm -hmm. And uh, those ladies, uh, two African-American women. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if they don't know about this, when I over the weekend, when I generally stop by and make uh, a visit and uh, uh, to some of these kinds of places, I'm going to take them this information. Mm -hmm. But, Mary, because they're a small business, and, you know, with the COVID uh, all over the place, a lot of folks that, you know, perhaps used to go there, students that used to go in there and buy chips and all that kind of stuff, that's not happening now. So I give them a, a couple of dollars every two weeks. I just take some money in there and give it to them. Yeah, see, yeah, what, you know, know, what, yeah. what we're all experiencing is even the children a lot will not are not buying food out no more they're yeah. cooking at home every time i talk about it, i say oh yeah. i'm gonna order me a pizza yeah. my granddaughter said granny we got enough food in there i say thank you mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah things are different so these small businesses are suffering mm -hmm. and uh, all of the uh, statistics and the numbers and whatnot seem to indicate that a lot of these small businesses uh african-owned Hispanic owned, uh, 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 Native American owned, uh, these places are not going to stay in. You know, they're going to lose, you know. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. All right, we have uh, uh, our veteran engineer in the building today and giving us uh, technical advice on what to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, 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 those of you that are able to hear us, uh eight six eight zero three four two zero three five one four three three six. Uh you guys uh, uh need to go to your neighborhood barber shop or your neighborhood uh, uh sandwich shop. Take them ten dollars. Just take them ten dollars if you want them to stay. You know, because things have been so bad. Mary, we talking about four months now. Mm -hmm. March, April, May, June, Didn't and take this long. is July. You know, and, and it's been tough. So now uh, this grant, the Michigan COVID-19 Safety Grant Program, uh, is going to be up and available for people to complete the application online. And it'll be ready Monday, uh, July the 27th. And they're going to keep it up till August the 7th. So 727 through 87, uh, July 27th through August the 7th. Small businesses, hair, uh, uh, nails, uh, massages, uh, sandwich shops, small businesses and whatnot 
are going to be able to get up to ten thousand dollars just as long as they use it to uh, 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 maintain the business. So, <laughs> and then uh, I got another call, uh, Marion. Uh, this might be one of our guests. So let's see. Uh, good morning, caller. You are on the air, and thank you for calling. Ask Welfare Rights. You are on the air. Yeah, this is Willie Willie Baptist. Well, Fantastic. All righty. Uh, thank you. Member of the National Welfare Rights Union. Uh, and thank you so much, sir, for calling. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Willie Baptist uh, coming out of uh, New York uh, with the uh, National Welfare Rights Union. And uh, we invited Willie to uh, make some comments this morning. Mary, you want to introduce a little bit more about Willie? You know, uh, we've been knowing Willie for quite a while, for a long time. Um, and he... He's probably the problem, uh, the, uh, the reason why Maureen and I sometimes have all this gray hair. Welcome, Willie. Willie has been one of our teachers, uh, have been in the field with us all through the country and stuff like that. And we are happy every time we can get him on, on this program. Welcome, Willie. Well, thanks for having me, you guys. Uh, okay, we, we need you to share a little bit about some of the work that you're doing. But uh, before you go into that, Mary and I were talking about this. Uh, you have probably already heard that number 45 has sent federal troops to Portland. He is threatening to send federal troops to Chicago, uh, threatening to send federal troops to Detroit and some other places uh, to quell what he says, all of the violence and what not that's going on in the streets and the mayors and the governors of these cities and states have not requested that so uh mr willie baptist why don't you share a thought or two about that and good morning go ahead you're on the air all right uh i don't want to pretend that anything i have to say about it is the bible of course but i i want to give you some of my reflections i think uh because the circumstances of the day with the, the erupting resistance around George Floyd mur murder, uh, the Poor People's Campaign that is reaching throughout the whole country, there's a, there's connecting up with struggles that are taking place throughout the country. Just a general period of uprising that, that have been, mm -hmm. uh, be, that have been set this country for quite some time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's very important that we're going to understand what's happening now within a historical perspective, and especially the economics of, the, of that history, yeah, history. I think there's two aspects to this whole uh, deployment of federal police agents. Uh, one is the maneuvers of Trump, President Trump, for purposes of getting reelected. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the other one has to do with some of the more deeper economic shifts in the economy and the downturn of the economy that's given rise to, to unemployment, growing homelessness. And these are problems that predated Trump. And the forces that are having to deal with that uh, are having to deal with it in a way that, that anticipates further uh, breakouts uh, in this country. What we've seen so far, given the nature of our time, we haven't seen nothing yet. The 44 million people who've gotten their unemployment, uh, uh, notice, I mean, they got uh, 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 their layoff notice and so, mm -hmm. so forth, we haven't heard from that, that group yet. And this covered every community, every impoverished community. During the Watts uprising, in the 1960s and in, in the Detroit uprising, in some 300 cities in the late 1960s in the ghettos, it was the it was Harlem that fought the police. It was Detroit, the workers and poor folks that fought the police. It was the uh, uh, Watts poor and dispossessed that fought the police. And the powers that be have studied that period, like they've studied all uprisings. And they are anticipating, and what they're doing today, the prospect of a very wide and prolonged resistance of increasing segment of the population. Uh, 
my estimate of the situation is that we haven't seen anything yet because the problems of homelessness, the problems of water, the, the problems of housing, mm-hmm. these problems cannot are not being solved under, uh, in this system of capitalism. They have not been able to solve it. Since the 2008 crisis, these problems have gotten worse. Uh, and, and what we're seeing today is a coronavirus that has aggravated this fundamental crisis that is very explosive. As you know, during the, the later latter 60s with the ghetto uprising, these, the economic conditions, along with the police harassment that triggered those uprisings of over 300 cities or more, that they were conditioned by, by uh, economics that included some 50 to 60% unemployment among the youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was then. It was in the poor black communities that erupted. But today, those conditions continue to persist and even gotten worse in the poor black communities, but it's also happening in the Latino community, in the Red Reservation, in the poor white slums that are accumulating all over the country. We are indeed dealing with explosive times, and the powers that be are looking at that because they study history. Much he of does us. What? Study history. Oh, I thought he said that the president studied history. <laughs> no, no, I don't think he's done. No, I'm talking about president. I mean, people got to understand Trump and where he comes from. I mean, he's been in office for almost four years. Uh, but the people who control the U.S. state apparatus, the political police, uh, the military, Pentagon, um, the judicial system, uh, uh, that, that whole grouping of people have been controlled by a bureaucracy that's been in power for 80 years. They are having to contemplate the consequences mm-hmm. of today's uprising, mm-hmm. how far they're going to go. Mm-hmm. So what they do today is tied to, tied to that kind of historical perspective, which they've uh, studied in their military academies, their police academies, and their think tanks. They are looking at what's happening, and they're looking at how these times are indeed explosive, and they're trying to respond to that. When I talked to Marion earlier, we talked about the prospect of, of a kind of fascistic uh, police state apparatus. And I think when we look at the times today, we're looking at the fact that the, uh, the period of economic expansion that characterized the, tent, the period of, of the Watts uprising, of the Detroit uprising, uh, that expanding economy uh, is contracting. Mm-hmm. Along with the contracting of the, the economy, there is a contraction or dismantling of the, of the welfare system. Now, during the 60s, when that uprising took, that, when those uprisings took place, they were able to rely on the expanding economy and the expanding welfare state, and they had those as sources of resources they can rely on. But today, with the constriction of the welfare state and the dismantling of it, and then the growing unemployment and, and economic downturn, they don't have those kind of resources. So the options they have as a class of folks is a consideration that goes beyond any kind of democratic facade, uh, but actually trying to figure out what the, how are they going to control an increasing growing segment of the population that has no other recourse but to resist and to fight. And uh, this is what they're thinking. Trump, I think, and who he represents right now, they're not focused on that. They are focus on him getting reelected. And he's borrowed a page for some of the uh, uh, right-wing elements like uh, Ronald Reagan. When he got elected to the governorship, that was the first major office that he, he, he acquired before he became president later on, mm-hmm. was that he ran on a platform based on law and order, uh, all white, all classes, law and order against the black criminals of what? And he won the governorship of California. Uh, this whole deployment of federal, federal police agents by Trump, is, and he mentioned it straight up, is that he's he basically taken up 
uh, he's found an issue that he wants to focus on, and that's this law and order issue, and uh, that he can consolidate his base uh, uh, so that he can get elected, he can get reelected. And you should, you should, this whole opposition that he's, he's given, he's, the support he's given to the local police department in terms of uh, 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 the, the, uh, what they represent, the whole countering this whole idea of defunding the police, He's using that issue and using the racial overtones and all the stuff that's connected to the police to win, as part of his election strategy, the constituency that backs the police. The police represent a conservative voting base, and he's trying to secure the police vote as well as their, their constituency, conservative elements, in, uh, uh, in some of these communities and cities that he's trying to appeal to. So what he's trying to do is to, uh, and he's been doing this all along, you know, uh, his posturing around Venezuela, his, all these dramatic things, things that he's done to keep the, framing the issue is to get reelected. Now, at the same time, this, the elements of this whole process of what he's doing have to do with some of these more powerful elements who's controlled the, uh, the state bureaucracy for years. Uh, uh, I call, I mean, they are centered around this very powerful and formidable group called the Council on Foreign Relations. They exist of past national security advisors, past people who've been uh, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or Pentagon, uh, you know, also certain so-called community leaders that they brought into their midst, and they sit down and study these developments, including Trump. Uh, I think I I I think that they are using Trump as a uh, as a way in which they can establish the kinds of policies that they want. But I don't see any section of of the capitalists or any section of the state apparatus have any kind of reserves that they had during the sixties. And I don't think even even the fasc, fascist uh, direction or implication in this thing are not the same as that during the time of Hitler, during the 30s. Mm. If you remember, Hitler actually, his platform was full employment. And he actually, on the basis of shifting the economy from civilian production to war production, he actually nearly accomplished full of employment. Well, we're in a period where, with this technological revolution, we're in this in this period of so-called jobless recovery. That that is no longer an option. So the kind of uh, uh, political form of control in terms of fascism, uh, something like fascism, is not going to be the same as what it was in the '30s. And those of us who are leaders and trying to organize against the injustices that are in the misery, water cutoff, housing struggles, that we have to have an understanding of who we're fighting and what we're fighting. And that means we have to have a historical perspective uh, 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 as much as uh, on a level at least uh, comparable to who we're up against. And these people are no joke. And they, well, Trump might be a joke, but they are no joke. Yes, they yes. The, so that's, that, that's my, some of my reflections on events. Maybe if you ask some particular questions, I can make more sense of what I've just said. No, I think, I think you gave an excellent mm -hmm. overview of, of uh, a current assessment of where we are today, uh, the forces, uh, powers that be in terms of the economic realities uh, I would say to you, and we have just about two more minutes for this segment, uh, the, the fact that so many millions of people are on or, or expecting to receive unemployment. <laughs> and I think yesterday uh, in Michigan, uh, 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 a significant number of people applied, brand new applications were put in. Uh, for unemployment benefits in line and, a long time and and the bad part about all of this you know there's just so many bad parts 
is that the additional $600 a week hmm. that the federal government had been kicking in over and above the state unemployment dollars is due to end today or tomorrow. The last checks will be mailed out today, today. or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so in about a week and a half, folks are going to have to, in Michigan, the maximum you can get is $362 every two weeks. Yeah. And folks yeah. had been getting $362 plus $1,200 every two weeks. So yeah. uh, give us your uh, last uh, one minute and 40 seconds uh, in oh. terms of uh, predictions. Uh, see, you don't time, you don't time me. Yeah, I got you time. You know, <laughs> one minute and 40 seconds now. Well, well, uh, uh, or what you see coming. Eminem, you know the impossible thing for me to do, but I, I just think that we're, we're, our backs are being put against the wall and we have no option but to generate the kind of power that can defend our lives. And for us, power means organization. And if we don't organize our numbers against the powers of the, of the forces that we're dealing with, then we're going to get our ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And the first step in organizing a mass movement and organizing the poor and dispossessed is to organize the organizers. That means identifying leaders who are now being radicalized by events. People, I know when I uh, got involved with social activity, it was largely the Watts Uprising. I was 17 years old, and I was a fanatic baseball player uh, trying to get uh, build up so I can get a contract. And my name was Will William, but anybody was named William, Billy, or Wilbur, they were called Willie. They were called Willie. That's why I got my name, because the main man at that time was Willie Mays. I mm -hmm. thought eight sleep baseball. But when you had tanks coming down your community, like in Watts, and you have a caravans of police and sheriffs with shotguns out of their windows coming down, mm -hmm. and you're confronting tanks and military helicopters uh, mm -hmm. confronting you, it makes you rethink what you're dealing with. <laughs> I was radicalized by those events. Thousands and thousands of these young kids that are in the streets are being radicalized. They're be asking questions about our society. They're asking questions about what is the role of the police in society? What is the role of, of, of economy? And what should be a, the kind of economy that secure housing for and food and water for everybody, especially when it has the productive capacity to do that. They ask these very basic questions, and so they're being radicalized. So it's at this moment we got to tap into that radicalization and build leadership, leadership with a historical perspective, a leadership that's capable of movement, uh, uh, mastering the art of political strategy, uh, uh, leadership that's capable of dealing with the sophistication of the powers that we're up against. And they are no joke. Right now, we are dealing with a problem that I see among a lot of young that they, they tend to, to approach the struggle as if they're shallow boxing. Uh, they go into the ring blindfolded. Huh? We are yeah. fighting real people. They're very intelligent. They hire the best anthropologists, the best political scientists, all the various ex uh, areas of expertise to control us. If we don't meet and, and match their sophistication with our sophistication, then we're going to lose. That's right. Then what's the point? The point is to, is to solve the problems that are ailing us and our families and our kids. Now, we're in for a long struggle because the problem is not going to be solved like it was in the 60s hmm. with the expansion mm -hmm. of the welfare state and the expansion of the economy. More and more people are going to be facing problems. When we organized the Homeless Union, I'll stop here. We organized the Homeless Union during the 80s and 90s. Uh, I, I was re really reminded how different these times were from the times in the past. Mm -hmm. It was during that time that homelessness became much more structural and that the typical homeless person was a 12-year-old white girl or boy, although the images they project of homelessness is totally different than that fact because mm -hmm. it's more that typical that typical uh, 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 case of homelessness is, is, is far from our thinking right now. 
but people are being made homeless all over the place. People are being impoverished all over the place under these conditions. Uh, but it's, it's so important that we understand exactly these times and that we identify leaders and build organizations and that we organize our, a, a powerful movement that can move this country at a time when people are being radicalized, people are questioning the society. Uh, uh, that's my final comment. You sure well, that's your final comments. comments? Well, thank you, sir. Uh, we really uh, appreciate uh, that. <laughs> and we're going to be right, calling. M &M. We're, we right, M &M. will be M &M. calling you again. All right? All right, M&M. And thank you so thank much, you. dear. Be careful and be safe and talk with you soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah you guys too. Back at you. Y'all be safe. Man. All right. All thank right. you now. Thank you. All right. Peace. All right. Bye now. Bye. Uh, good morning, caller. Sorry to keep you waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. You are on the air, caller. Hi, this is Gracie from Highland Park. Well, yeah, good morning, Miss Gracie. Gracie. Uh, we're good ready morning. for a uh, Highland Park report. Go ahead. Well, before I do the Highland Park report, I just have to say how great it was to hear Willie this morning, and that as soon as I heard about in Washington, people being swept off the street. It reminded me of the uh, what happened during the, uh, the Venezuela. Remember mm -hmm. when uh, people yeah. were uh, disappeared? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of that, and I was—I mean, you know—it just, uh, you know, really upset me. So I'm really glad to hear that you know people in the nation are crying out about this. That That's this right. is mm -hmm. just not right. Yeah, this, that's right. That's not right. Uh, uh, Miss Gracie, mm -hmm. before you give your report, I don't know if you noticed this, if you heard about this, Mary, uh, you either. Uh, the moms in Portland, Oregon, all right, so they've been having pure hell in Portland for a couple of months now, and these mm -hmm. young folks are out every day. Started off three or 400, then here come these unnamed, unmarked uh, federal, federal, federal troops, troops from somewhere picking people up off the streets, like you said, Miss Gracie, and, and, and putting them in unmarked cars. Mm -hmm. And what started off with three or 400 uh, 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 protesters it's against gone. violence is now three and 4,000 every night. Mm -hmm. But the thing I wanted to say is, is that the mothers, the moms got together Monday or Tuesday of this week that just passed, yeah. and they started locking arm in arm in front of the protesters. And the mothers were saying, stop hurting these people. Stop hurting these nonviolent protesters. Well, these unmarked, unnamed uh, soldiers uh, uh, fired tear gas at them, mm -hmm. at the mothers. Mm -hmm. And it was just a mess. So that went on a couple of days. But what I didn't know, and I hadn't seen that till uh, John Royal, National Lawyers Guild, told me, is that, Miss Gracie, uh, after a couple of days, the dads got upset. Mm -hmm. And the moms were already out when the dads came out, and they came out with leaf blower machines. That's good. And every time uh, the tear gas can uh, canister came, they, op they, they fired up the leaf blower and sent the fumes back down the street toward the uh, these oh. soldiers. Mm -hmm. I thought that was fantastic. Oh, you, you know, yeah. you, you, you put all that air and, and whatnot in the other direction, and soldiers was coughing and running for free air and all of that you know so well, uh this so is a total uprising that. in That's portland a major step oh, yeah they yeah. showed them on so the news the other day. because you remember under that white right wing fascist government in venezuela yeah they uh what happened Before was Chavez. the moms uh -huh. got together and they were holding up the pictures of everybody who had disappeared yes and now there's this whole nation of people a whole nation of people who were raised by these fascists, yep. and what they're trying to do now is trying to figure out who they belong to, hmm. who their family, who their working class families were. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just a mess. Uh, we and, got and, some and history. Other, yeah, and the other thing is, like, I remember from the 60s how the uh, FBI, you know, because this is the thing now, these uh mayors and police chiefs, they're saying, come on into the community hmm. and uh, try to control this violence, you know, against, you know, what's happening in the neighborhood. But and what they, they the don't, what people don't realize is that that's an invitation for these FBI 
to uh, try to control and see who the leaders of the movement are. I remember that when we came home, Chuck and I, we knew our apartment had been searched. Certain things were missing from our apartment based on the kind of activities we were uh, involved in. Yeah. Police following yeah. folks around, sitting in cars, uh, the uh, FBI. So yeah. uh, these, uh, you know, uh, governments, these uh, mayors and police chiefs who are inviting these FBI agents into the community are inviting them to uh, crack down and follow leaders of this movement. Yeah, we have to be aware now. Uh, uh, Ms. Gracie, I know you're going to give your report, especially on this tech event that's coming up. But uh, just let it be stated that the uh, mayor of Detroit has already uh, threatened to file a lawsuit if uh, federal troops are sent to Detroit. I know that that's what happened in uh, the attorney general in Portland uh, or in Oregon filed one. And I think the one in Chicago filed as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, you know, at least those three places, uh, none of us are, are asking for federal troops to come in to do nothing here. We don't need that kind of, you know, interference at all. So what a mess. I think we're heading toward uh, civil unrest, Ms. Gracie, across the nation. Well, and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Okay, yeah. go ahead. And uh, 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 we're waiting on your tech report. Then. Marion's got something to ask you. Go ahead. No, no, no. Okay, I just, and, and before, I, before I give my report, uh, in the free press today, uh, Craig, he had, there's a report from him, front page. Oh, he says uh, these FBI agents aren't going to be in here to, uh, you know, deal with protesters, but he supports them being in to uh, fight the violence that's happening in the community. So we're not feeling we better that. Watch it. We better watch it. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not feeling that. We're not feeling that at all. I see that okay. more and more people are beginning to come out also because there was a press conference yesterday of some folks out uh, that we know. Uh, we had, uh, but we got it at the last minute. But understand that the folks are, are beginning to wake up and understand that the, uh, we have to be right out here with these young people, not necessarily doing all the marches or nothing like that, but we have to be out here because of the mere fact these are our children, and yeah. and they're trying to fight back for a better society. So that's up to us. You can sit in your houses if you want to and think everything going to be all right, but one day they're going to knock on your door and began to mess with you. Go on, Gracie. All righty, so my report. Um, I don't really have much to add about the tech there. The website's still not up, but, you know, uh, it should be up soon. People can still RSVP at um, events, bright, you know, uh, it's free, you know, for the community. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's a place where people can actually make you know, donations. And as I said before, like this will, this will be for a, um, to support Parker Village, which is a sustainable community that's being developed, you know, in Highland Park. Um, I'm trying to right now, like uh, what we're trying to do is just talk to people who said that they wanted to be a part of this uh, fair. Okay. So I, you know, I have to get, you know, we have to get back with everybody and uh, make sure that they still want you know, they, you know, want to be a part of the fair. So, um, and talk to people, you know, how I like the personal touch, you know, I don't like this email thing. I mean, I like it, but you know what I mean? I do. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Now the event is not until August. Right. It's okay. August 22nd. Okay. So we're going to have to continuously, uh, speak on it, mention it, remind people of it. And as the details, become more available and whatnot. We're going to depend on you, Ms. Gracie, to uh, uh, keep everybody in Highland Park updated about this event that's coming up in just about a month from now. Is, it, is yeah. that okay? Yeah. Will it be yeah. for two days, Gracie? No, oh, well, it's, you know, like there's a thought. 
that um, maybe if the mood is right, the people who are on the panels might want to um, come back for a second time to talk to people who didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, uh, time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to answer questions that people had. Thank you. So there, but we're trying to take the temperature of that now, whether or not people want to have like get together maybe that Sunday and uh-huh. uh, continue the conversation. So, okay. um, you know, again, that's all still in the planning. All right. Well, you so, know, we're still a month out. So yeah, uh, yeah, if you will uh, continue to collect information mm-hmm. and, and whatnot, uh, uh, we will depend on you again, Miss uh, Gracie, next Friday to call yeah, in and I'm, update I'm, us to see if there's yeah. anything new that we need to know. And looks like it might be time for another Highland Park COVID-19 testing activity needs to be coming up. Our numbers yesterday were 699 uh, new cases. Mm. We, it, it, you know, going up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, Ms. Gracie, uh, next Friday at uh, 10 or 10.30 or something along those lines, uh, we're going to wait for you to call us and give us some updates on what's going on in Highland Park and focus us, if you will, on this tech event that's coming up in August, okay? Well, I certainly will. Before I leave, let me tell you Let me tell you about two events that are happening. One event that's happening this weekend. One is that um, it's a, um, some candidates are going to be out talking to the community. Mm-hmm. And at Jacoby Park on Avalon Street, it's 24 Avalon Street. Mm-hmm. And there will also be voter registration there. And what day is that? That's tomorrow. Okay. Is there a time? Uh, yeah, 3 to 5. 3 to 5. And again, where's the location? 24 Avalon Street. Okay. And There's some of the candidates uh, that are running uh, for election for August the 4th will be uh, there. These will be state representatives. Oh, state. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they were here. They were in Highland Park two weeks ago, some of them but they're coming back at a different location in the park. And so there will be food there, and it says that there's going to be entertainment. But, you know, more importantly, there will be voter registration for people who have not registered. Okay. Um, And the second one is that um, the Highland Park Crisis Coalition is uh, giving $200 per household Mm -hmm. to people who've been uh, impacted by COVID-19 crisis. And so uh, there's a telephone number um, that people could either call or text. Uh, well, three one three three four nine one zero six three. Okay. And so um, Maureen, I sent you the the information. I texted you and um, Marion this morning to make sure that you had that number, that uh, text number, mm-hmm. the call number. Because I know a lot of times people don't like using the computer, so they'd rather call. Okay, well, I wrote the number down, 313-349-1063. That's correct. Okay, so folks in Highland Park that are having some struggles with uh, the COVID virus and and not being able to go to work and those kinds of things can contact that number and uh, uh, listen to the details and follow the instructions. Uh, that can end up with a two hundred dollar a gift to a folks right. in Highland Park. Uh, did I say utility, it right? Yeah, and it says utility assistance. So. Okay. 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 Uh, Miss Gracie, thank you so very much, Mary. Oh, you got anything to add? No, Gracie did a tremendous job, uh, and thanks for always being there for us, Gracie. All right, uh, uh, Miss Gracie, you don't have any more time to fool around on the phone. Get off this phone and go back to work. Here. You mean I don't have any, I can't talk about the poor people's campaign? No, it's too late for that now. You got to go back to work. Here. All right. (laughs) Thank you, Miss Gracie. Okay, Okay. bye-bye. All right, goodbye. 868 right, Marion, we've had some really good uh, reporting going on this morning and we're down to about our last uh, 10 11 one, minutes so uh go ahead one thing i want to do is uh get um linda to give us a report probably next week on the question of 
the schools in Island Park yeah. and what's happening. Yeah. And we probably should have some more people to call in around your school and every other school because this is a big struggle. It's a big deal, big mm -hmm. deal. And this is really, uh, and I know children don't understand the full thrust of what's going on, but we need to let them know, look, this is not your fault. Uh, it's the fault of uh, and and show who the real enemy is in this. All right, Marion, here's some information that may be helpful. Now you may uh, you may have heard of this already. Uh, my sister contacted me and told me about a new app, and it's called Via, V I A. Uh, uh, I was trying to think. Isn't that the name of the um, the uh, uh, trains in Canada? Isn't it the Via Canadian? V I A. All right, well, sure is. isn't that what it is? Okay, so this is V like victory. V I A. Uh, uh, this is a new application. You have to access it with your phone. Uh, so uh, those that want to know, can you access it with a computer? I don't know that, but I'm saying you have to act. You have to access this with your phone. So you uh, uh, pull up. Uh, go to your Google search and put in V like victim, I like uh, uh, I, and A like apple, and uh, uh, push enter, and then follow the instructions on the phone. Now, Mary, what this is is a transportation application. You know how you have uh, Uber and mm -hmm. you have Lyft? Well, this group has just pulled itself together. I don't know the origins of it. haven't researched it yet because I just heard about it yesterday. But you can go to the VIA app, fill it out. You have to give all the information. And what it will provide is five daytime rides, five per month for $2. So you can get picked up uh, at, at Highland Park and taken oh, to man, your uh, doctor's that. office in, in, in Detroit, and uh, it'll cost you $2. You can only do that five times in a month. Now, if you have um, a job and you don't get off until 1 o'clock in the morning or, or, or my sister gets off at 1130 at night, and, and sometimes, you know, they're sharing cars over there, and she found this app, and she is eligible for unlimited nighttime rides. That's un wonderful. Unlimited. So $2, all right? So that's the VIA application. Two dollars per ride. Five you can get. Five rides you're eligible for uh, in the daytime, but at night, if you need transportation to your job, uh, 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 to your job from your home or from your job back home, you have unlimited nighttime rides. Now this is a new program, and you know everybody has to be careful of everything now. You know, so you still have to wear the mask. You still have to pay attention to see who's coming to pick you up. You know, whatever else, safety is always an issue. Uh, uh, you're in a car that maybe others have been in, so you need at least one glove on, if not two. So when you get in a car, you want to make certain that you're not touching surfaces that maybe the driver hadn't cleaned off. But that's what this is called, the VIA app. Now, I'm sure it's only $2 in the beginning, and if it works well, another two or three months, it'll be $5. And another a few months after that, it'll they'll be $10. You, you know, well, I don't think they're going to give you the car. But uh, uh, no, but it's going to cost more money. So I just heard about that one. Uh, tomorrow is Saturday. So up at the Debo Center, the Detroit Association of Black Organizations on Grand River in Wyoming, they're doing free COVID testing. Free testing. Free testing. We'll say it again. I've said it before. Free testing. And the person will say, uh, how much is it? Free testing. Free testing. And people need to go and get this test taken because uh, uh, Marion just mentioned something that's going on at the schools. And if you didn't know, there are 600, 700 Detroit public school kids that are being uh, uh, bussed or taken to school by their parents. And uh, the courts, in a court case uh, that by any means uh, necessary, file uh, talking about the dangers in sending kids to school so quickly. And the judge came back with the decision. And the decision was all of the children that are currently enrolled in summer school have to be tested. 
So the first 200, 250 got tested, and two of them so far have tested positive for the virus. And, of course, that's not a surprise. So, you know, uh, the next 200, next 250 about to be tested, and I'm sure it's going to be that same thing. So that, that becomes important. So people need to go and be tested. Don't forget about D.L. Hughley sitting on TV in Houston doing his uh, routine and passed out, hit his head, ended up with a concussion, and they tested him for the virus while he was in the ER, and he was asymptomatic. He had the virus and didn't know it. And he's apologized many, many times for infecting others, and he had no idea that that was going on. Mm -hmm. This is where we are. All right, rental protection. The governor's rental protection program ended, I think, last Friday. Uh, uh, and let's see, the day is the 24th, so that would have been the 17th. So no longer are residents in, in uh, Michigan who are living in places where they have to pay rent. They're not eligible or not protected anymore. This, this protection started back in March, but they're no longer protected. And what happened in Detroit is that uh, the, the elected officials here were able to get a pot of money together. And Detroiters are still going to be protected from eviction uh, uh, who are paying rent. And here's the number you have to call. Okay, I'll give you the number. I'll call or I'll be right with you. The number you have to call if you're paying rent and you need some help because of the virus and you're separated from work or, you know, waiting for unemployment or getting unemployment is not enough. You have to call United Community Housing Coalition. Area code 313-963-3310. 963-3310. And you, if you can't get through, you have to leave a message. No point in calling welfare rights back to say I left a message and nobody called me back. You have to call. You might have to call every hour because everybody's on the phone trying to figure out what they can do so that they don't get uh, evicted and don't get thrown out of their apartments and homes. So, and did you see the news last night when the young lady that worked for housing said if, they, if the government didn't move uh, probably today or tomorrow or something like that, a lot of people will be evicted by next week? Well, not in Detroit. Yes, it was. Uh, not no. We got money in Detroit. We we we. You okay. know you know about it. Yeah. But she didn't know about it. But uh, and I looked at it. Well, the bad thing about this is that Highland Park is don't have any protection. This wasn't Highland Park. You know, no, but I'm saying Highland Park doesn't have any protection. Mm -hmm. Hamtramck doesn't have any None. protection. Nobody None. else. So only Detroit so far has had a pot of money put together to keep people inside. And of course, the issue here is going to be. You're right. How do you let everybody know that that's what's going on, you know? Caller, thank you for waiting. You're on the air. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, the, uh, caller, I think you switched over. You are on the air. Thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. You're on the air, caller. Okay. Uh, so, again, the number for rental protection is 313-963-3310. Mm -hmm. All right, now, Marion, uh, DTE has a, a, a whole bunch of new programs that they're trying to roll out. Uh, one of those is the Energy Waste Reduction Plan. But folks should know that uh, Welfare Rights has been in there battling uh, with DTE uh, about uh, making certain that whatever kind of payment programs that they're about to launch this month in July and certainly in August, are, uh, that low-income and moderate-income families have to be protected. So these programs being sent out by DTE uh, are managing uh, these kinds of programs. Caller, you're the last caller of the day. Quickly. Grand rising, my she rose. And how are you uh, this afternoon, uh, Reverend Malik Shabazz? How are you? Blessed and highly favored. I just want to get a quick announcement out if I can. Uh, please, you have 40, 41 seconds. Yes, ma'am. Sunday at 4 p.m., we will have prayer, rally, march, distribution of Crime Stoppers 
reward flyers, Nathaniel Townsend, a four-year-old baby, and that's where I come from. Four-year-olds are babies, and to be protected and loved. Uh, he was body ended up being bullet riddled, uh, and we must say there is no safe haven for anybody killing children. If it's killer cops or if it's El Negro, there can be no safe haven for killing babies and children and women and and and, and our elders. So we're asking people to come on out, uh, bring a mask, bring a mask, bring a mask. But Sunday, 4 p.m., one eight six one one Burwood, that's in Detroit, 48221 uh, zip code. Got it. Uh, we'll be by. We'll be there 4 o'clock this Sunday. Thank you, my sister. All right. Thank you so much. Be blessed. Man. All right. West Side. Bye -bye. Uh, uh, just uh, right off of uh, Wyoming and Myers. Burwood, isn't that the street that Ann just moved to? Burwood? I think so. Yeah, that's where it is. All right. Uh, uh, okay, the last message of the day. Uh, if you're looking for a testing site, a COVID virus testing site that's near you, what you want to do is uh, go to, on your computer, you can always go there and look up uh, uh, michigan.gov forward slash COVID, okay, and push enter, and then it'll tell you, you know, where to go to get the actual sites. Or you could just go to 211. If you go to United Way and call 211, and they'll ask you for your zip code, and you tell them that you're interested in going to a testing site near you, uh, they'll give you that information, two or three places and the times and whatnot. Uh, Marion, we're down to our last minute, minute and a half. You have uh, 30 seconds to say uh, good night. Good night to you, Maureen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, I'm glad we uh, were able to make it here today. And I hope that you get active. The more you move around, the more you're going to learn about what's going on out here for the benefit of the next generation. All um, right. Uh, uh, Willie, uh, thank you so very much. You can't hear this, but we're glad he called. Gracie, thank you so very much for giving us an update. Uh, but let's remember what both Gracie and Willie and mm -hmm. Marion has said. We have to pull ourselves together now. There are no choices. There are no choices. We don't do something about this COVID virus and all of this presidential push to put kids you're back in school. You're not going to be able to. You know, it's going to be a whole lot of things that's you're not, not going to happen. You're not going to be able to vote. You know, sit, it's, sit around and wait. Yeah, if you sit around and wait, uh, uh, things are not going to happen the way you want. So August the 4th, there is a primary. I urge you, contact your voting location to make certain that they're going to be open. A lot of these schools and a lot of these churches where the voting machines are, they're closed because of the virus. So don't get caught unaware. You still have time. Make certain if your voting place is not open, make your plans to get down uh, to uh, uh, West Grand Boulevard and voting at the uh, clerk's office. Uh, with that, we'll tell everybody, uh, uh, family and friends of Miss Elvira Wickerson, we miss her so much already. Uh, family and friends of Miss Henrietta Carter, we miss her so much already. Family and friends of Miss Carrie Powell Gray, Miss mm -hmm. Carrie Powell Gray, that accidentally the Ad the Adchesters came up and sneaked her out of here day before yesterday, and we miss her already. Other than that, the Lord willing, the creek don't rise. Marion and I will be back next Friday. And with that uh, big-time engineer, Mr. Henry Tyler, uh, you can play our music and tell us goodbye. <laughs>